Abba Namaste guys, Christian Arlong, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Wednesday evening. I'm so glad that I automated, Leanne, Abba Namaste, that I automated the um, this week's newsletter. I wrote it yesterday because I knew I was going to have a busy day today. Elizabeth, Abba Namaste. So, I just realized the link is not underneath the video. So, all right, after this video... We'll post the weekly newsletter. Hopefully you guys get value out of it. You go up and namaste. It's not an interesting topic. Let me know if you enjoy the topic, if you enjoy the quote and the breakdown of the quote. Um, what occurred to me today, it was kind of funny. So um, pretty much done with the healings for the day. Going to take a nice cleansing salt bath to decongest, to decontaminate, to release the connections. Up and namaste, Christian. What wonderful message do you have for us today? Ooh. I have a really good one, one that I am relating to from many, many years ago that I heard Grandmaster Cho Kuksui say, as well as um, relating to my inner experience after today's healings. So when we do healing, whether it's pranic healing, quantum touch, theta healing, Reiki, any form of uh, even prayer, like praying over someone, laying of hands, the Avani, I'm going to say the upper chakras are getting highly stimulated and highly activated. So if you're sensitive, you can feel something coming up while you're doing the healings. You can feel a downpour of bliss, of stillness, of inner peace, of joy, right? Some people even like will start laughing when they're doing a healing on somebody because so much energy is coming down. Now, I remember in 1999 when I learned Transcendental Meditation, when I learned TM in Lancaster, Massachusetts, and they were mentioning that as you, be, as you regularly practice the TM technique, you will start feeling or experiencing bliss. I was like, bliss? What's bliss? I mean, it sounds nice, but what is bliss? And then when you go from the TM technique to the TM Siddhis technique, which is a more advanced practice within the TM school or the TM movement, you start to experience more bliss. Now, it's interesting because that's a word that you see quite often in spiritual books, spiritual literature, retreats, courses, workshops, Falguni, I'm a namaste. You see the word bliss a lot, but you cannot um, if, if somebody goes, well, what is bliss? It's usually a good indicator that they've never experienced it. So years later, a quote by Grandmaster Cho Kuksui was saying that the closest thing an ordinary person will come to understand and know bliss is through an orgasm. Is through an orgasm. Which actually makes a lot of sense because I've been meditating regularly for 20 years. I've had orgasms regularly for 20 years. And I can definitely understand that the bliss that I experience in my meditation practice over the past 10 years is typically more profound, more rich, more deep, more satisfying than having an actual orgasm. But isn't that interesting that most People, men and women, will do anything and everything in order to experience an orgasm, in order to experience like, like a connectivity to a realm of energy that is unavailable to them at most other times, right? You only experience that energy when you have an orgasm. But through a regular, the key word being regular, meditation practice, Inner, purif inner purification practice, spiritual practice, one will be able to refine their body, their energy body enough that they can start experiencing bliss that transcends even the experience of having an orgasm. Right, and I, I, I've always kind of used the, the metaphor with people. They go, well, what's bliss like? Or what's this higher level of happiness like or higher level of inner peace like and I said it's very difficult to explain until you have it it's like explaining an orgasm to a 10 year old they're not going to get it 
right? It's going to go over their head. They have no experiential understanding of what that is. But as soon as they have one, then they go, aha, that's what an orgasm is. As soon as somebody who's been meditating regularly has an experience of bliss, they go, aha, that's bliss. And the interesting thing about having an orgasm versus having bliss in your meditation is that typically an orgasm is very powerful, but for a very short period of time. You know, a few minutes, maybe a few seconds. Michelle, I'm a namaste. But the bliss that one can experience in their meditation practice can last not just for a couple seconds, couple minutes, but it can last for days, weeks, and in some cases I've heard of, months. Roger, I'm a namaste. Good to have you on as always. That's profound, right? That you can sit, meditate, connect to your higher self, and have a downpour of spiritual energy that's so potent, that's so strong, and so lasting that you experience like a, not just a physical body orgasm, but an energy body orgasm that can last for months. In some cases with the great, great teachers, they're in a perpetual state of bliss, right? Imagine that. You go, I'm a namaste. What's up, son? Imagine that, being in a perpetual state of bliss. So one of the benefits that we get as pranic healing practitioners, we do the Twin Hearts Meditation, we do our invocation, and then we heal people. And as we're healing people, that downpour of energy is passing through us. So if we're projecting bliss, if we're projecting love, if we're projecting happiness, if we're projecting um, enthusiasm to our client or our patient, guess what? That energy, those energies also have to pass through us first. So if you're projecting bliss, bliss has to pass through your system first before it goes to the patient. So that's what's so interesting that a lot of practitioners will notice if they, if they start healing early in the morning and then they have client after client after client after client, the Sudhir, I'm going to say the bliss um, becomes more magnified. It becomes more amplified. Michelle, I'm going to say, and that's what's so beautiful about the healing arts, not just in pranic healing, but other energy schools that deal with alleviating the pain, the sorrow, and suffering of humanity. So again, going back to tonight's original point, as Master Choa said, that the closest thing an ordinary person will, will come to experiencing bliss is through an orgasm. And some people, I've used this term in the past, even with pranic healers, I've used the term ordinary, and they don't like that term for some reason. And I go, well, that's the term that the teacher uses to describe an average, everyday, common, ordinary person. Right. So like, let's say, um, you know, let's say everyone takes an algebra exam and you have one person in the whole class that scores 100. And then you have um, one one person in the class scores a 25 and then most everybody else scores between 70 and 80. So that would mean between 70 and 80. Those are the ordinary test scores. Those are the ordinary practitioners of that, that mathematical exam, right? So we have to understand that being ordinary is not a negative derogatory, derogatory term. It's simply that person's growth and development is similar to most other people. They are the norm, they are the average. So when it comes to spirituality, you have chakras, right? Spinning energy centers that are located all over the body. You have an aura and we know through scanning or feeling energy, we know through clairvoyance, seeing energy, that an ordinary person has these size chakras. A below ordinary person would have smaller chakras, an above, an above ordinary person would have these size, and then you have superior and extraordinary souls or beings with much, much bigger energy bodies. So a person who has a spiritual practice has bigger chakras that can process more energy, more information quicker, and they have a greater ability 
to tap into the higher vibrational energies like bliss, like bliss, right? If you have, if bliss is vibrating on, let's say a scale of a thousand, but your energy body, your chakra system is vibrating at a scale of 500, just as an example, it's going to be near impossible for you to go from 500 to a thousand to experience that field. But here's the good news. If you are more conductive and more receptive to the divine energies of God, the great ones, your teacher, your higher self, that uplifts your entire system, upgrades and uplifts your entire system to be able to access those higher vibrational energies. Aren't we lucky to have teachers in our lives that help us move in that direction? So every time you do your meditation practice, every time you invoke or pray to God, every time you receive an energy healing session, you are increasing your vibration to access higher vibrational energies that normally would not be made available to you. So ordinary people in general can access the energy of an orgasm because it vibrates lower so it's easier to access. Right? Let's say it vibrates at a 250 and most people are at 500. But if you are able to condition and train and purify your energy body to go to 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 vibrational energy, I'm just using random numbers right, to give you an idea, then you're able to access wisdom, clarity, insight, power, stillness, bliss, that would once otherwise be unimaginable to you. And I say, I'm, I don't say the word unimaginable accidentally because a 10 year old can have an idea, can imagine what an orgasm would be like, but until they have an orgasm, they have no clue. It's unimaginable. They can kind of guess it might feel like this, it might feel like that, but until they have one, it's unimaginable. So the same thing as a spiritual practitioner, you can have an idea of what this level of bliss is like, right? But until you get there, you're, uh, it, it's gonna be unimaginable. Like the bliss that I experience in my meditations now versus what I experienced maybe five years ago, I had no idea they would be as blissful <laughs> as they actually are. So I hope this makes sense. I hope I didn't go over anyone's head. I hope I didn't shock anyone. I hope I didn't offend anyone because that's not my objective. My objective is to pass on the teachings of my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui, to the best of my abilities, to inspire you to learn pranic healing and practice pranic healing, to inspire you to learn arhatic yoga and practice arhatic yoga. Why? So you can become a better person, a better soul, and a greater instrument of goodwill and the will to do good. Very simple. So, that being said, for those of you who are in need of healing, which we all are on some level, go to christianarlong.com. It's my website. It's my name, christianarlong.com. And click on schedule a consultation or click on schedule a healing and let me know how I can assist you and serve you in your transformational process to bring you from a 500 to a 1,000 and beyond. It almost sounds like Toy Story, right? Light speed and beyond. I forget what the line is. It's been like 20 years since I've seen Toy Story. Maybe even longer. Got my LaCroix going. Yeah. So, any que any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the section below. Um, I will respond to all of them, no matter what. And I look forward to serving you guys in the very near future. Yvonne! Where you been, girl? Late to the party. We love you, 3,000. <laughs> so be it, properly and rapidly. Now, 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 now. Um, let me know how I can assist you. Please read the newsletter. As soon as I'm done posting this video on Facebook, I'm gonna post the newsletter right above it. So enjoy the newsletter. Um, any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to connecting with you guys very, very soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant. Wishing you a beautiful Wednesday night. A beautiful week and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.